what's going on everybody hopefully everybody's having a good easter out there getting to spend some time with the family maybe you hid some easter eggs out there for the kids whatever you may do for easter hopefully you guys have a good day out there uh i want to bring something up here and you guys see going across the uh top scrolling across there leave ceo calls out hga on twitter um with this being said, this is no type of discredit to either Leaf CEO Brian Gray or HGA. But this goes back to, you know, was it maybe about a week or two ago? The Twitter world went in shock over the HGA slab with the Tua, I think it was Tua downtown. It had the artwork on to it. And, you know, eventually everything got, you know, taken care of onto it. Well, since then, you got to think, everybody's going to be looking at HGA, you know, across the board. Whether it's to get their two minutes of fame or whatever it may be out there. You know, there, there's been a lot of stuff going on with it. And, you know, with it, some of the stuff may be legit. Some of the stuff, like I said, might be for somebody's two minutes of fame on there to get what they call it, Twitter followers and all that stuff. But it, it, there's a lot to posting on social media to gain traction versus, you know, the real story. Now, I went on there and I took probably about 40 minutes, I'd say, my time to go over this. And I'm, let's pull it up here real quick because I want to show everybody what I'm talking about. This is what it is here. And, yes, that is the real CEO of Leaf, Brian Gray. You, many of you guys know him. He buys from you off of uh, eBay. Uses it for his repack product. Uh, some people might know that he had a uh, sports player, I guess you could say, not live up to his contract in signing autographs, and people are stuck with redemptions on it. And I guess it's a kind of a high profile person from the way it was talked about originally, but he, I guess, is going to try to go out there and get, you know, the person uh, taking a court and sued. So that, that might be a lot of reason why you heard the name here recently if you really don't know who owns Leaf and everything. But this is what was posted on Twitter two days ago, maybe. And, oh yeah, from the time I'm doing this video, about two or three days from the time this video pops up, it says this right here is copyright violation on HGO on their slab. Let's pull up the slide, the picture there. So there's the picture there for everybody to see. Um, it's basically, if you look at the label, it's the basketball cereal with milk coming down. Now, are we really nitpicking in this case, you know, and headhunting that, you know, clip art of milk and some cereal is wrong? Are we, you know, with it because... Before we even go into it, yes, you know, when you look at the actual card crunch time, Steph Curry, uh, you know Panini did all their thing with all their licensing and all that because no way a Panini card is going to come out in violation of anything. At least it shouldn't. But with a brand new company, with what just went on with the Tua, this comes out. And, you know, it draws a lot of attention. Now, this was posted on April 2nd. That's right. It was, for me, it was yesterday. So uh, April 2nd, it came out. This was no April Fool's joke or nothing like that there. Um, this here is a lot different when you're talking about copyright, and from what I understand. And I know a couple of you guys commented on the last video, and you, really, you understood and knew what, you know, what it came down to, what copyright is and everything like that. I don't think taking the milk in the cereal bowl is copyright. Granted, the milk is in a different position, all that stuff here. When I'm talking about copyright, it's like taking somebody's like artwork. Somebody drew it up, you know, and stuff like that. This area, you could go out there and get probably that same picture off the internet or something, you know. But it just shows that... Well, I would say, first off, Brian Gray should know what a copyright is because he's the owner of Leaf and... I just don't see how this is actually a copyright violation offhand. 
And no time for I mean, I went back on his Twitter to see if, like, he said, hey, you know, hey, late April Fool's joke or something like that, and there was nothing on to it. But, you know, when you're already a company that's under the microscope, like HGA being a new company out there, and trust me, I've heard it from good to bad across the board on them. Depends who you talk to. And everybody's going to have their own, you know, opinion on to it. Whether they're a big GMA, PSA, HGA, Beckett, uh, all the other companies that are coming around now. Everybody's going to have their own way of grading on to it for their own either personal collection or for resale value. Do I think the labels look cool? Yes, I think they look cool. Um, I just don't know if after what happened with the Tua thing, if I owned HGA, if I would have probably still be doing the personalized options onto that until I made sure everything was crossed, you know. And they, they might have done that already too, but it just this is just me speaking freely here because this is really close to the last incident that uh, came out where the artist, you know, he rightfully got what was coming to him with both credit and money. But at the same time frame, you know, people are now just busting them down um, across the board on stuff. If you guys haven't seen or been following, they spelled Michael Jordan's name wrong, Kobe Bryant's name wrong on a slab. And from what I've seen, they pushed the buck onto the person typing it in onto the form. I can see saying that, okay? But at the same time frame, if you have a QC of looking at the slab and the label at the end, shouldn't that have been caught, you know, offhand? I mean, Brian's name was spelled like B-Y... Wait. Yeah, B-Y-R-A-N-T. And I forget how they misspelled Michael Jordan offhand. But when you're only producing 2,500 slabs a week versus, you know... 10, 20,000 slabs a week. I would expect that the QC part of it would be a little bit more top notch in a way to where there shouldn't be errors, you know, floating out there. Like, especially a big players like Jordan and Kobe offhand. Uh, I don't know what you guys would expect offhand again. This is just my thoughts on this. In no way am I calling, you know, either Leaf out for their issues with their repack products and stuff like that. Or am I calling off, you know, HGA saying they're all, they're just, you know, uh, a bottom line, what were they called, a bottom line grading company and stuff like that there? They're both businesses, and they're trying to be run to the best of their ability offhand. So, I, I know social media can be really hard out there as soon as somebody posts something. And you're going to get, regardless whether it's good or bad, you're going to get hate. It's how you respond to that hate that will separate you from everybody else. And if there's ever a word of advice I can give to anybody that's starting up, whatever it may be, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, whatever, you're always going to get people that disagree with you or hateful emails. Now, there is a boundary point of, you know, where somebody comes across and says they're going to come to your house and, you know, beat you up and all the, or talks about your family or whatever. But you got to be able to keep a cool head onto that stuff offhand and be able to understand that when you, if you do choose to respond to that, you're going to be under the microscope of the public. And people will be out there, and I don't like using the word headhunting, but that's what we use in my primary job. And we like to say headhunting a lot. People will then all of a sudden put you under that microscope and headhunt you to find every little thing that's wrong with you. And in a way, I do feel bad for HGA because there's people out there doing it. But, again, you brought some of this stuff on by yourself, you know. And my biggest like issue, like I said, was their PR originally on to it, how they handled situations. As far as the misspelling of names and the labels, I would have been, you know, hey, it was misspelled on their forms. Our QC department did not do a thorough inspection afterwards to make sure it was corrected. We are fixing that time now. That would have been my response. Something like that there. Short, simple, sweet. You know. And if you guys probably search somewhere on Twitter or Instagram or whatever else social media, you guys will find the Jordan and the Kobe. I, I can't find them anymore. I don't know who all posted it because when you start trying to read Twitter, 
it takes a while. There's like retweets and everything else with all these messages out there. But with keeping this video with around, you know, 10 to 15 minutes, I'm just curious what everybody's thoughts are. Like I said, there's no hate against uh, Leaf. Um, there's no hates against HGA at all onto this. I'm just curious what people's common thoughts are with it all. And, you know, what with this all going on right now, if you were HGA, how would you handle this situation offhand? And it's just always got a curiosity to see what people come up with. Um, you know, what would you do about the slabs with the special art, we'll call it, being put into it? Would you continue doing it, or would you uh, pause it for a while until you made sure whatever images that you were choosing to have were done by a particular artist, that way you had all the licensing? Whatever it may be out there, I'm just curious the people's opinions onto this. And like I said, with this being Easter, I didn't really want to, you know, go out there and have people slam either uh, business at all, because everybody's going to have faults across the board. Everybody is. It's just, like I said, how you respond to the uh, issues at hand. All right, everybody. I'm out for today. I got some uh, good video coming out tomorrow. Make sure you guys check it out. Deals with prison basketball. As you guys can see, I got my box right there, but I'm probably going to end up selling it. I'll give it a few days. If it don't sell on my slabs, I'll probably open it for everybody. To be honest, I'm just really, really nervous to open up a $2,000 box of Prism. It's not like I have a $2,000 box of Flawless where I know there's going to be one nice auto in there. Where it will probably recomp me 50% of my purchase. Because you literally could get 10% of your purchase price out of here. And we're talking raw, not graded. Alright, everybody, take care. Hopefully you guys have a good holiday out there. And yes, before I forget real quick, I do have a PSA order that went into assembly today. So we're going to play off that for the next auction. If they get it mailed out to me and it's here where I can expect it by Friday, we will do an auction this Friday. If it's like in QC2 only or it ships out like on Friday, we'll do it the following week. So I want to have some fresh stuff out there for everybody. All right. I'm out for real this time. Take care. See y'all later.